Today, we are going to look at a Power Automate use case. People often ask, how can I get a list of all the names and email addresses for a Microsoft team? This report should exist in Teams, right? But no, actually it does not. The good news is that you can build an easy flow to get this information. To get started, I have logged into Power Automate and I am on the Create Flow page. For this example, I am going to use an instant flow to use a button to trigger the flow on demand. Though as a tip, if you need an updated list of names and email addresses on a regular basis, you can also use a scheduled cloud flow to automatically generate the data. Stay to the end and I will show that trigger as well. To get started, let's click on Instant Cloud Flow. A floating dialog box will appear where we will give the flow a name and pick our trigger. For this example, it's going to be manually trigger a flow with a button. Then I will click on create so we can start building the flow. The only thing this trigger does is create a button in Power Automate, so we don't need to do anything to configure it. So I'm going to add the first action. Now, whether you realize it or not, every team is built on an Office 365 group. So I'm going to select that as the action instead of teams. From there, all I have to do is pick list group members. For the group ID, I'm going to click the drop down and select the name of the team that I want to get the emails and names for. Now that Power Automate knows what group to look for, I have to tell it what to do with the information. I'm going to format it as an HTML table. This will make the information gathered from the group connector easier to read. HTML table is part of the data operations category. In the from field, I'm going to use dynamic content to pull in the value, meaning give me all the information you gathered up from the list group members action above. Then under advanced options, I'm going to select custom so that I can put in a header and a value of my choosing. So the first header is going to be members. The value is going to be display name from the dynamic content. The second one is going to be email and the value will be mail from the dynamic content. The next thing we need to do is tell Power Automate how to send me this information. I will click new step and search for send email. From the list, I'm going to choose Office 365 Outlook because this is tied to my business email. Most companies that I'm aware of will make you use a work email, not a personal email. You can type one or more email addresses in the to field if the list needs to go to the same people each time. I'm going to use dynamic content to pull the email address of the person who clicked the instant flow button. A subject line is required, so type in anything that makes sense for your business process. For this example, I'm just going to say list of team members and emails. Then we need to put some information in the body of the email. Now you can make this as complicated or simple as you need it to be. For this demonstration, I'm just gonna grab the output of the HTML table. Then I'm going to save and test this flow. I always recommend that you test every flow to make sure that it works as you intended. So I clicked on test in the upper right hand corner, then selected manually, and then I'm going to click continue and then run flow and then I can click on done. Now the other way you can run this is to go back to the details page for the flow and click the run button that was created by the trigger. Now it's important to know that only people in the owners field are going to see the run button in Power Automate. If you add somebody as a run only user, they can run this flow from an email that Power Automate sends them or from a button on the Power Automate mobile app if you have access to that. And here's the result of our test. I navigated to my Outlook account and you can see that Power Automate sent the email to me with a list of all the members and all their email addresses for the selected team. Now let's go back to Power Automate so we can look at the scheduled flow trigger as promised. Give the flow a name and then we need to decide how often the flow will run. For this example, it only needs to run once a month. In the Run This Flow section, I will click on the calendar icon and choose to run it at the first of the next month. And I want this to run at 8 a.m. In the Repeat, I will select Repeat Every Month. And then click on Create. Another tip I will share is that this trigger does not default to your local time. So you can go into the Advanced Options and pick your local time zone. 
The first time this report ran, I wondered why the email came a few hours after I expected it to, but once I set the time zone to Eastern time, everything worked the way I intended. From here, the steps are the same as I already demonstrated, so now you know how to create a flow to send an email on demand with an instant flow or use a time-based trigger. If you found this video useful, please click the subscribe button so you can bookmark my channel. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.